I'm going to share with you today our experience of outsourcing our library catalogue cleanup, and I'm going to briefly focus on the implementation of it and the issues we had and the solutions we had and ultimately the benefits for our library. Cleaning up a library catalogue reminds me of cleaning the cutlery. And if you can just imagine for a few moments, um, thousands and thousands of catalogue records, uh, 40 years of different catalogers adding their own version of cataloging, um, start pulling in copy catalogue records in from your library management system, throw in a few ebook databases, and stand back and watch as cataloging practices change. Um, this is pretty much what our library catalogue looked like at the time. So why would you do a, a clean-up? Well, we wanted to load our records up onto OCLC for collection analysis. And we sent them a sample. And they got back to us and said there were too many um, inaccuracies and too many errors. And the most common ones were the date and the language, which are important in a record. Um, so they said that the language or the date were missing or invalid. Um, the authority control process, it helps um, authorise and standardise author headings and different things like that. And we wanted to merge and correct any unauthorised headings. We had also started to import RDA records, and so we had non-RDA, and then we had new or hybrid RDA, and we wanted to have some consistency. And if you saw cutlery like that, you'd want to clean it. You'd have to clean it in order to use it at some stage. So why did we go with Backstage? They're a company in Utah. Well, we had a recommendation from the National Library of Ireland, and um, it was also a company that wasn't a one-size-fits-all. It, was, it offered customization specific to UL. Um, it also said that if they were going to clean any records or touch any records, that they would also give some RDA basics. So we said, um, and when I say RDA basics, I mean something very simple, like um, when you're describing something in a catalogue record, if you Traditionally, you put in the letter P for pages. So what RDA does is it um, expands abbreviations. It does lots of things, but that's just one example of what it does. Um, also, my colleague Caleb had worked with Backstage before as well. So that was the reasons why we went with that company. So um, very specifically, we, had, we scheduled a, um, a conference call with Backstage which I was not prepared for at all, and it was about the eight pages of a profile that we had to go through. Um, and to be really honest with you, I chose the default option for a lot of these because I didn't know how they were going to affect our records. Um, I spent a little bit more time when I did the RDA profile for two reasons. One, we weren't on the phone to them at the time. I was at my desk filling it in, which was much more comfortable. And two, RDA was new to me at the time, and I didn't know how it was going to affect our records, as I say. And the more I um, filled in the profile, the more I learnt about RDA. And there was hover buttons over all the uh, different choices. And I was like, oh, that's what that does, or that's how that would affect our records. So it started to make sense as I filled in the online profile. And that link that I have there is like a, a narrative of statistics of what other people who have gone with the backstage, of what they chose, um, what, what RDA options that they chose since RDA began in 2013. Um, the vendor, uh, our representative, she was called Judy, and she was absolutely brilliant customer service. And she had said that we were going to be really overwhelmed if we took um, whatever number of reports we decided to get in. If you notice, I say I for anything that's praiseworthy and we for anything that's uh, blameworthy. <laughs> So um, we decided to take in monthly reports and we took in biannual authority reports and a bi-weekly status reports. So to take a line from Brian Gillespie yesterday, you could paper your house and your library 
with these reports. There's re there was lots of reports. And they'd be coming in and we'd be thinking we were doing a fabulous job checking them and working along. But there was challenges along the way. Um, we checked the sample files in a safe environment on our test server. Um, we looked for different files like missing indicators or invalid indicators and, like I'd said earlier, unauthorised headings, things like that. It took a lot longer than it did for me just to say that sentence. Um, I asked my colleagues in Special Collections uh, to, to look at their specific records because in Special Collections they would have different requirements and they checked along um, and gave loads of feedback as well at the time and that was good. And I also went back to Judy at Backstage and I said, what would be the top five main areas that you would look for if you had thousands and thousands of reports? So that was really helpful as well. Um, and about six or eight months later, by the summertime, um, we were confident enough, my colleagues and I, and with the help of Capita, we loaded back in the 300,000 records and it took, we did about 5,000 a day. And that took, as I say, it took about three months. Um, as I mentioned, there were challenges along the way. I got a phone call one day from my colleagues in Special Collections and she said, is Scarif in Colorado? Mm -hmm. And um, Scarif is a wee small village in East Clare and there's about 800 people and it ain't in Colorado. And um, what had happened was, as I said, RDA abbreviates or expands abbreviations. So we would have lots of records as you would have, say, County Clare, County Galway, County Westmeath. And it had um, expanded the CO for county to Colorado. <laughs> yeah. And um, so we explained this to Backstage and they were, um, they were fine about it, but they, they wrote a script and they said that they would look for the word Colorado in the publication details and change it back to CO. So um, they fixed all 2,581 records. Yeah. And my, other, my BDI colleagues in Special Collections, they noticed another, um, there's another field that's used in, in particularly the special collections, it's a, the 561, it's the ownership field. And we had put on this local field at the end of it, so to protect all of the information at all costs, and it's for ownership and to say who had donated a particular thing or whatever. So when we re-imported our records after the cleanup, this 561 started to duplicate on the OPAC, which is nice if you're the donator, but it, isn't, it doesn't look good on an OPAC repeating several times. So again, we used, uh, Caleb, uh, my manager showed me how to use uh, the mark edit tool and we have sorted it out from there. So um, the improvements and the benefits, it was Helen Williams from L London School of Economics, they also did a clean up. She said it's, um, it's only possible to retrieve relevant records if there is a certain degree of standardization the way your catalogue is organized. And UL has that now. We have um, our library has is ready now to upload to OCLC. It, if, it's, if a user performs a search, we have um, the correct headings for authors. We have um, the consistency. We've got rid of some lengthy, cumbersome processes, and for the future, we have discovery capabilities linked to RDA. So to summarise. <laughs> There are companies out there to help. We chose one that offered RDA customization and, or sorry, RDA enrichment and customization. Um, there were challenges along the way. We found ways of um, sorting them and fixing them. And just to know that you're not alone and there's someone there to help you dry the dishes and put away the cutlery. Thank you.